to take. Cold goes in, can't get it. And Barbie looking for the slicing master straight onto the back line. Cold is on the front line as Boxer goes down. Patrick takes him out. Now Patrick with the Featherstorm Whipper with a perfect taunt. But the stop watches out. New Death needs to do a lot on this fight because Nemesis is shredding through Origin. There is no escape. There is no surviving. Fanatic, clean sweep, Origin. Not quite able to find the damage on to Sven, who goes on a killing spree, killing that enemy top laner. Sven scaring into the hourglass. Not going to be kept alive too much longer, except he will. It's a kill for Broken Blade on the Zazel. TSM's got a quadra. And against many people's expectations, TSM will take down Cloud9 yet again. Welcome everyone to Esports in 30. I'm Lisa Duan. This is Matt Hempstead. And we've got another week of League of Legends to talk about, including, get this, 100 Thieves finally picking up their what? first win. Matt, so what stood out to you this weekend? Yeah, I mean, the 100 Thieves finally picking that scab off and making it work was, was very impressive. So, I mean, not, not very impressive. It was a, a win that they got against the second worst team in huh? the league. Just because it's a good, it's a good, <laughs> good metaphor, analogy. Lisa. Yeah, okay, okay, let, okay, let it happen. It's okay. fine. Um, on top of that, like over in, in Europe, we see G2 and Fnatic being those two teams that are kind of far and away above everyone else. Meanwhile, the rest of the pack is like tied at 2-2. Two and two. There's like a, a seven or six team tie in, at 2-2. Two and two. And of course, insane. in the LCS, there's six teams tied for first with a 4-2 and two record. So there's going to be a lot to figure out are those the six playoff teams that are going to just last until the end or is a team like Clutch going to make it or is FlyQuest going to finally figure their stuff out because they've started really really poorly to start off the LCS. Mm -hmm. But it's still early it uh, to go even deeper into the LCS. We've got Azale joining us in just a few but before that let's talk about the highlights from week three. And Blaber, ooh, ooh exclamation trouble. point over his head. There's Crown found out. Flashes puts up a shield. It's not going to be enough. You don't ban players. Oh. My. Dukla, he's going to try to get away. Second ult is available. Pops in. One more hit will kill. Oh, trying to kite. kite. He's trying to kite. GP ult over top when you have multiple melee members. Even there's four melee on the side of Cloud9. can be stacking into that. So you have to have the perfect game. They're, they're going to find a little bit of the front line. Oh. Two kills instantly. The last amateur is down, last amateur is turret. Big damage on the crown. There's the first Donia's Hourglass. How about the second one? That's the stopwatch. And that's a kill on a Dokla. One for zero, Cloud9 diving in towards Arrow. They can kill number two. And the Guardian is for number three. There's that kill on a Yumi. And this is all she wrote. It is over. And Cloud9 will tie first place. They will take the 4-1 record, knocking down the undefeated Optic. Got his own team. Goes bottom to punish the flashless big. The knockup, they get the damage, the root, and first blood. You look at all around though, Smithy does have flash, as does the entire rest of his team. As they put damage on towards big, no way out for him, the flash of the wall! What a fight steal for X Smithy! Jokla takes massive damage at the very start of it all. Crown almost dead as well, and here comes Gorge and J over the back! It's a double kill for double. The stun's gonna mean almost nothing. Big is gonna be run down. They've got the minions and a four and two record, a two and oh week. Team Liquid will knock down Optic. Flash of the fight does go too well, but now outnumbered is Echo Fox. That's gonna be a great stun to land. Aurelia over the top now as well. It looks very solid. One zero on to solo. Now take it for the second. They're gonna find that hundred thieves showing signs of life. Fight Again, the battle is in this time. The aggressive going to go over the top. Goes pop blossom. Only find a single stun. Now answered back in the red over the top. It's one for zero hundred thieves. Look at the second they get it. Fake God is on the board yet again. How good is the Echo Fox cleanup crew? The stun is going to be found on the solo. Remember, his Zonius is down. They have the damage. They have the time. The shotgun comes in and rush will fall. And they might just do it as somehow Echo Fox must defend three versus five. Apollo barely alive, but the turrets are not. And neither is Rush. The turrets fall, but it is open. And it's got to be a miracle defense. They're going to try to shut down these kills as they keep going for more. The Nexus will fall in a Broken Blade has tabbies plus this bomby cinder. That's all you need. You just start walking him. You, you really can't just outside him. Go for it. Hey, bring down the hammer. It's a numbers advantage for Cloud9. They'll look to turn things back around. But Niski's going to be exploding. Jerkson gets himself away. But Sneaky's made his way into the fight. Quick now looking to find the stun. Able to grab one down. Now it's been having to get himself away. Can't do it. Nope, we got ourselves a fight. And that's going to be a big pull coming out from Grig on the Zazel. Who's still somehow going to be kept alive. Getting himself away. Since Gary going to be fighting. Jerkson off the side. Grig going to be killed now by Cloud9. Licker's taken very low. Into the back line he goes. Not quite able to find the damage on to Sven. Who goes on a killing spree. Killing that enemy top laner. Sven scaring into the hourglass. Not going to be kept alive too much longer. Except he will. It's a kill for Broken Blade on the Zazel. TSM's got a quadra. And against many people's expectations. 
expectations, TSM will take down Cloud9 yet again. There's no more perfection. There's no more winless. It's safe to say it was a wild week in the LCS. Who better to help us break it all down than LCS caster Azale? How's it going? Going very well. Thank you very much. Uh, before we get right into the League of Legends action, uh, we got to give you a big congrats. All right, you're engaged, right? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just How's the engaged, engaged uh, life going? Uh, it's going, it's going really well. Very happy. Uh, you know, Joanna and I are very happy. We've been dating for a long time, so yep, Aww. everything's good. Awesome, awesome. Give her, tell the missus hi from That's us. That's right. <laughs> uh, I will. Thank you. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right. Enough, enough of this uh, engaged nonsense. <laughs> Congratulations for real, but let's let's move on to the LCS because uh, we got to start with Optic. They started out a perfect 4-0. But then, you know, they ran to two top teams in Team Liquid and Cloud9. So now that we've seen them go against a couple of the best teams in the LCS, where do you rank Optic Gaming? Hmm. Uh, so I, I don't think Optic is is number one. Uh, you know, as they, they were sitting at 4-0, and oh, some people right. were talking about, oh, they're the best team in the league. <laughs> uh, a lot of that, I do think, was still strength of schedule. But we did see them have, especially against Team Liquid, an extremely close game. You know, that game, to me, came down to probably the Baron Seal from Smithy. Like, that that could have been the difference right there. And, and that was a situation where, you know, Optic had, had three pink wards and a sweeper available and didn't actually clear the ward that was in the Baron pit. So, like, that's a mistake you don't often see at Pro level mm. so like they were very competitive with tl though in in a long macro game you know this was like not a cheesy win this was nothing crazy so i think optic is, is solidly a playoff team with with room to grow and and i think that's like really exciting improvement from spring yeah lots just like that are also a little weird because they've shown such great macro through the first two weeks mm -hmm. um and i mean crown looks on top of his game as well so uh, i mean how do you think this team has evolved so much in the offseason to all of a sudden become a team that people are looking at to be a playoff team uh, and just compete with guys like Team Liquid in such a close manner. Uh, I mean, I mean, I think it is somewhat like they seem to be more on the same page this split. You know, we heard a lot last split about how you know Medios and Big, those were the two guys that were kind of doing the shot calling, but like not always agreeing, not always on the same page. And it feels like they are more on the same page now. They've kind of like worked out a system where they are communicating better. Uh, I think Crown is performing incredibly well. I think Medios has been having like an absolutely amazing season. So kind of their two stars are performing really, really well, and it feels like the team is kind of stepping up around them. Um, I I think that you know a lot of their wins like with Dokla playing tanks I think that more kind of suits the style that they want to play you know allowing crown to be more of the, the kind of focal point of the team and that's what they had done in a lot of their wins so you know it is a, certainly a team effort um, and I think it's it's more about like the improvements they've made in communication and, and play style mm. <laughs> we'll see if they can continue to get some wins as we go forward yep. uh, we got to talk about team liquid because they also they got their first 2-0 week mm -hmm. of the summer but they are kind of looking shaky still so why do you think uh, their performance is kind of unstable right now? Uh, so I've talked to a lot, a lot of the TL guys, and in some of their content, you'll you'll also see it. Some of their interviews, even they were tired after MSI. You know, it's it's something where if you go all the way to finals, then the, like the split starts the next week, basically, right? Like there's not actually a lot of time to to kind of go on break. Uh, MSI is also a different patch than than what summer split is. So you know, a lot of the other teams that that didn't make it to MSI, they were already grinding on the current patch. You know, preparing for the season where Liquid is playing on a pre previous patch they come home they're burned out they're tired and I think a lot of those guys just wanted to take a little bit of a step back and reset before summer you know their focus is certainly on worlds is certainly on you know uh, winning NA um, and I think that you know they wanted to take some time to kind of chill out you know in in the first week or two I think they were hoping that they could still win all the games doing that it didn't didn't end up being the case so you know after their two and two start I think they really have buckled down and are grinding hard again uh, and I think you know we're kind of seeing some of the the results of that you know with their 2-0 to a win last weekend and i'm expecting them to continue ramping up you know throughout the season so how long do you can do you think this hangover effect is going to last for because there's not really a break coming up either you know they go from the lcs to rift rivals back to the lcs yeah. and then they finally get a bit of time off for world so do you think they can kind of shake this with everything that's going on around team liquid like explicitly yeah, I think so. I, I mean, I think that they, they did already take some time off, right? And I think that was kind of the result of, of, of them losing a couple of those games at the start was from right. them, you know, not grinding solo crew, not doing some of this. So they have taken a bit of a break. And I think, you know, that hopefully will, uh, you know, be more than enough for them. They, they looked a lot better this weekend. And I, as I said, I do think that they are, you know, back in, in kind of the full swing of things as far as practice goes. I know they're grinding solo queue again. And that really is what it takes to kind of compete at the top level. So I think uh, they should be fine. And I'm, I'm excited to see, you know, next week and then going into Rift Rivals, as you say, how they're going to perform.
Yeah, but speaking of burnout, I feel like a lot of people like talk about players, but what about like casters and even audience burnout, True. right? Like, do you feel mm -hmm. tired to covering all these events back to back? <laughs> like, how does burnout affect you guys and I guess audience too? Um, I mean, I think I think for for audience, you know, it, it's pretty easy thing. Like, if you're not enjoying it, you mm -hmm. you don't watch, and then when you want to watch, you watch again, mm -hmm. right? You know, it, it's a pretty simple thing. I think for for casters, you know, most of us, well, I would say probably all of us, you, you get into it because you, you love the game and you're and you're really invested in it. So, you know, burnout isn't as big of a deal because we we are so invested in what we mm -hmm. are doing. Uh, I would say though that yeah, like you know, at the end of a long world's run, you know, when we spent like six weeks in, in China in the past, people are definitely tired and looking forward to having some time off uh, at the M end of MSI you know I, I did everything for play into the finals I was definitely tired but I got to have a week off after which was really nice and I didn't have to do collegiate so right. uh, you know that allowed me to kind of have a week to, to, to sleep a lot and chill a lot and you know uh, like for me resetting is often you know spending a lot of time like outdoors or, or playing some different games and things and then I always get the itch again to be like okay it's time to go back to league I, I want to play <laughs> good good self care is important guys that's right never yeah. forget um Azale, it finally <laughs> happened we have to talk about it 100 oh thieves God. got their first win and they did it without someday and with ryu starting in the mid lane uh how did you think the roster changes helped them win this uh, I mean, it, it seems like, you know, from what, what they had said, this is kind of the, the permutation of the team that is working the best is also really interesting. You know, I was really surprised that 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 roster doesn't have someday, right? Because I think that a lot of people were looking at it and saying someday was the best individual performer, especially in spring where he was having a lot of monster performances, even in losses. Um, so it's it's interesting to see Fake God coming in. I think he's performed well. You know, this That was like his first LCS win that he just got, which is really cool. Um, I think, you know, Ryu, kind of what he brings is I think he's a more proactive, more aggressive player than Saligo, and that's I think one of the things maybe the team was was kind of missing. Uh, and even in their loss on Saturday, I felt like they were playing a lot more aggressively. They were at least like trading kills, and, and it, it looked like they had, you know, some kind of life in them. Basically, you know, they were just sitting back and playing super super passive. So uh, I'm pretty excited to see that they are at least making some some improvements, but. That the the reality is it's still just over Echo Fox, who's another team that's sitting at one and five. Right. So uh, they still have a, a lot of room to, to grow and a, and a lot of work to do, I think, especially given the the base expectations for these teams when they brought in so many stars and and you know they've been tenth for so long. Mm -hmm. And it's it's not even that they start zero and five; they had lost a good five six games in a row at the end of spring. So they were on like a 10, 11 game winning streak, or rather losing streak. Uh, mm -hmm. So it's been a while since they they won a game. <laughs> I mean, good, yeah, it must yeah, feel well, good yeah. to finally get that yeah, win they, off. Yeah, they were popping off, yeah. <laughs> Especially if you're amazing after you come over and the struggles right. of the opening week. Um, but also, I mean, the one of these would love to get all of their stars in the lineup, right? They'd love to get someday in Ryu, Bang. They'd Ideally, all want to yeah. be on that starting <laughs> roster, but of course, it's not possible with the whole import situation. So do you think they'll continue with the starting lineup of Ryu and Fake God, or are they going to get some changes to hmm. put someday back in and bring Ryu back out? Uh, it, it's hard to say, right? I think clearly they're, they're willing to try anything uh, at this yeah. point, and I think it's going to be probably mostly just based off scrim results. You know, if Fake God is performing better in scrims, uh, regardless of, of kind of the reputation or history of the players, I think they're going to be willing to go with that because clearly star power has not been buying them wins, right? You know, you would have thought that with Someday and with bringing in Bang, like, uh, you know, it's, it's a year ago, 100 Thieves were at Worlds. They were in the finals in spring. You know, they, they started out so successful and it it feels to me like ever since ever since uh, letting go of Medios, it has been a bit downhill for them. But, you know, when you compare those two rosters, you're like, okay, well, well, amazing and Medios, a lot of people on paper would have thought would be pretty comparable. And then you're bringing in, you know, three-time world champion with with Bang in place of where Cody Sun was. Mm -hmm. And so people were thinking, like, on paper, this team should be really good, right? right. But uh, clearly, it's it's just not meshing together. And I think, you know, at that point, you just have to kind of throw everything out the window and say, all right, uh, like destroy all preconceived notions. What actually works? And mm -hmm. I think that's why they're they're running with Fake God. So if he continues winning in scrims, I, I expect them just to continue playing with him. Right, there you go. Maybe, but next time they got to be a team better than Echo Fox. Yeah. That's the next step. Okay. Win number two is coming up. Slow, slow yeah. steps. Yeah. Okay, it can happen. <laughs> um, let's talk about. Oh, you were casting another game uh, this weekend that in the epic history of TSM versus Cloud9, the rivalry. Uh, and just like in spring split semis, TSM came out on top. There were some really close fights, right? Yes. Uh, but TSM did hold on. Uh, how did they manage to get another notch in their belt against C9? Uh, that was a pretty crazy game. I, I mean, they drafted such different compositions like c9 i think i think that 
their comp certainly could have won the game, but it, it felt like it was uh, so much more difficult to execute on because they're drafting like a full physical damage team fight comp. They have, you know, uh, multiple tanks on the other side. They have four champions with dashes against Poppy who can interrupt and, and block those dashes, you know, so I think that there was a lot of things that, that made TSM, I think, really, really effective in the 5v5 and, and Cloud9 would have had to play like a more effective kind of, you know, split push style of game. Uh, I think that became very difficult when they fell behind early because then, you know, this team that is so strong in 5v5 can dictate the pace of the game, can look for engages, but, you know, it was it was actually a really, really close game. I was very impressed with how Cloud9 was executing a lot of these fights, but, you know, TSM, it really just took that one fight in mid lane. You know, we were like 30-something minutes in. They get one really good team fight. You know, they are able to actually, you know, take that down. Zven got the Quadra, mm -hmm. uh, and they just straight up ended the game off that. And it's, it's, it's really interesting to see, you know, how Cloud9 is, is so willing to, I think, draft these more complex uh, compositions and, and kind of more difficult to pull off strategies mm -hmm. because I think they can be really, really powerful if you can execute at that level. Uh, but it does mean that, you know, if you make any sort of mistakes, you're going to lose, right? And I think that, yeah. like, it, that's one of the reasons, though, that people love watching Cloud9. I think it's also one of the reasons taking those risks is, is why they're often good internationally. So, yeah. you know, TSM certainly came out on top um, and I think they played really, really well. But, you know, it's also it's also fun to see Cloud9 doing something different with the uh, Gragas Yasuo. Yeah, and we've been talking about, you know, the whole Greg Akkadian uh, mm. jungle duo for a while. But now this week they went Grig both games in the jungle. So is this a sign that they've started to favor Grig as their starter? Or do you think Akkadian's going to get some more chances down the road still? Uh, I feel like it's probably Grig now. Uh, I mean, I think especially, you know, based on the fact that Grig had been having more success, a lot of people had talked about, yeah, well, Grig has had more success, but he had had kind of the easier opponents and Akkadian had been playing against the tougher teams. Right. Now I think that's certainly no longer the case. You know, C9 TSM is a huge matchup for, mm -hmm. for you know, like standings implications, for strength of the team implications. The fans are always so hyped up about it. And the fact that Grig, you know, won on Saturday and then they kept him in for, you know, a really tough match, like, that's going to be a big deal for them on Sunday as well and he also you know was able to get the win there i think you know really kind of spoke a lot to, to the confidence they had in him and you know i'm certainly expecting that they're going to continue moving forward with greg because from what i have heard you know around the team is that they wanted to settle on someone and, and really devote all their scrims and all their practice to one of those players to, mm -hmm. to kind of really buckle down so you would think after that sort of a result uh, that they would be going with greg yeah as a player it's nice to hear that the team has faith in you and they want to play you absolutely uh, often right um let's talk about another player blabber because we only saw Cloud9 use Blabber twice in spring, but then they mm -hmm. used him in their win against Optic this week. Uh, what situations do you think uh, they elect to use Blabber? Uh, it's interesting because I mean, when it, when it came out on Saturday, I was I was willing to say, oh, okay, it's because of the Gregus Yasuo, right? And mm -hmm. that's something that they actually play in Academy a lot for C9 Academy, and, and that's a combo that they use really, really well there. You know, Blabber and Golden Glue do it. Um, Blabber has also done it with Jukes, their, their top laner. So, you know, that's a situation where you're like, okay, he has more experience running that sort of composition. That's probably why they brought him in. Uh, but then they just did the same thing with Sven Scarin on Sunday. So, uh, now, now I, I think it's more just, you know, one of those situations where I think they're trying to reward a player for good performance, you know, and, and it can be a situation where it's like, I mean, Cloud9 in the past, you know, did use Blabber pretty actively, yeah. uh, use Golden Glue pretty actively. It feels like they have also moved away from that, but I do think some of the teams, when the players are performing really, really well in Academy, also want to reward them with stage time and and kind of, uh, you know, allow them to, to have a chance there mm -hmm. too. Yeah, I want to touch on CLG uh, a little bit too because they had a disaster of a spring split, but then they brought in Ruin, and all of a sudden they're they're four and two with, with wins over Team Liquid and the Golden Guardians. So has faith been restored again, or do you think there's still problems <laughs> to fix from spring? Uh, I mean, I think there's always still some problems to fix. Uh, I think that, you know, it, it's certainly looking a lot better. Uh, I think, you know, that is very exciting. But, but CLG, even in spring, they, they finished like seventh. They were, you know, a game or two out, out of playoffs. And, you know, it, it's, it's interesting because I felt like a lot of their issues, you know, with, with actually missing playoffs came from some of the roster moves that they did during, during the season. You know, they played their academy team, I want to say four or five games, and they didn't win a single game with their academy team on stage in spring, right? So, sure. you know, when, when you're only one or two games out of playoffs, Offs and and you know your your main lineup is is doing so much better than your academy team, but you keep playing your academy team, and they keep losing. That I kind of had uh, some issues with, and I think that their their coaching staff maybe let them down a little bit in that regard in spring. That being said, the team certainly does look stronger here in summer. I think that you know Bofrost and Six A are performing better in the bot lane. I think Wiggly has really stepped up. Ruin just looks like an upgrade over Darshan. He's been playing really well, so it feels like you know it's not just that they're they're in this six way tie for first. It's like well you're actually just look better. 
better, right? Like you were performing better, uh, especially the game against Team Liquid. I thought was really impressive. So I think it's it's kind of an exciting time right now for for Counter Logic Gaming, which uh, probably means that they're about to tank. It's so true. It's so true. It's always it's always the opposite, right? As soon as people start to believe, they're going to do terrible. So yeah. you gotta you gotta like no 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 they're going to be last place. They're you know, uh, but we'll we'll see how they do. No. I think it's it's looking pretty good for CLG. No, Faith Age, the new era. Of Faith Age is back. Don't. No. <laughs> All right, you brought it up. There's a six-way tie for first right now, and we want you to yeah. call it. Are these the six teams that you think will make it to playoffs? Mm -hmm. uh, I, I, th I think that's it's tough. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I mean, I, I think it, it wouldn't it wouldn't shock me by any means, but but I also think that like FlyQuest, it's it's really surprising to see them doing so poorly yeah. out the gate. Mm -hmm. So you know, I am kind of expecting FlyQuest to, to bounce back. They have so many veteran players. You know, they were you know a very strong team making top four in spring. It, they didn't change any of their their roster, so it feels really weird to me to see FlyQuest sitting at one and four. Um, I am expecting them to make some major improvements, and I do think that you know towards the end of the split, we are going to be seeing you know like FlyQuest, Clutch, uh, and some of these teams still battling you know for that for that kind of final playoff spot. Mm -hmm. um, so I don't think it's it's super clear cut, but also all the top six teams like they have certainly you know kind of separated themselves from the rest of the pack, and and you know wouldn't be shocking to see them them making top six either. All righty, right there, Zale. Thank you so much for joining us today to chat Thank about you. LCS. All the best and enjoy the rest of the summer split. All right, now Matt, we got to jump over to Europe and talk about G2. Uh, but before that, why don't we get caught up with some highlights? Flash forward, red buff applied. Dance of Arrows is available for Kira in just a moment. Kadrill goes down to Misfit sub Kira. Maybe go for a gank, but Kira is going to spawn him out. No oh flash. my word, Lamb and Wolf are chasing down. The bite, the dance, the arrows. That's really bold. Realm Wolf will get interrupted. That's the sliding glide. Feverman sets it up for Kira to get his fourth and fifth. XL, what do you have left? They're not looking for the fight yet. Emperor's divide. That catches up Kajal. Killing spree for Hansama. Some looking for the kill, some looking for the Nexus. Mickey goes down 0-5-2 for his LEC debut. And Misfits take down XL. Here, the on the hunt used the enchanted crystal ammo only connects onto Nuska and he has QSS. Teleport coming in here from Chachi as well. It's gonna be a 5v5 in the mid lane, and Chachi is in the perfect position to open up with a maelstrom of death. Splice just turned this fight right around on Shalka. Shalka wanted the team fight, and Abadage maybe has done enough on the back line. Oh my goodness! Abadage with the double. It looked like Splice had it, but Shalka somehow find the fight. But look at how low Kobe is, he's devoured. Nuska is gonna spit him out. Just take the next is Shalka. They may have thrown it in the last final moments. It's on upset. He uses the shield. He's in the GA. That's a triple. Shalka could have just taken the Nexus. And upset oh! won't do it. In the end, Shalka takes Spice to the late game. And in the end, they take the win. Predator in, Whipper with a flash, Taunt, Hillerton flashes in as well, looking for the chase as Nuke Duck tries to get away, but the Grand Engines will knock him back in his first blood to Hillerton. Oh, he's gonna be jumped on, there comes Whipper as well with the Stand United, and Fnatic is just looking for the one punch done. Brilliant cards gives you day, Cold goes in, can't get it, Alfami looking for the slicing master straight onto the back line. Cold is on the front line as Boxer goes down, Patrick takes him out, now Patrick with the Featherstorm, Whipper with a perfect Taunt, but the stopwatch is out, Nuke Duck needs to do a lot on this fight, because Nemesis is shredding through Origin, there is no escape! There is no surviving! Fnatic, clean sweep, Origin! Fnatic, after being behind the majority of the game, strike back, find their team fight, and take down Origin. Coming in as well, Jaxtral and Attila are already being targeted. That's a double root, but it's already a dead bird. And Wonder is now picking a fight with the help of Yumi. Yes, she comes with a death from below. Delivered onto Cabochard, Mowgli as well. That's one prowling projectile. That was an invisible pipe. Chrono Break comes out. And now just Zuke will be locked down, stunned up, dead wow. from below. How much of this is bordering on the line of griefing. Finally, the <laughs> Nexus will be focused, and G2 will face Fnatic next week. Another crazy week in the LEC sees two undefeated teams sit on top of the standings. Matt, let's talk about the standings. Let's bring it up. And uh, were there any surprises? 
I mean, Vitality is one team that's kind of shocking, right? Because they're sitting there at the bottom at 0 and 4 next to Excel, which y you'd think Vitality is pretty far away above Excel, right? But <laughs> Vitality has just looked so rough, and they've got inconsistency in their bot lane. Uh, Jazuke is not playing on top of his game right now, and it's just, it's weird to see a team that was so aggressive and so not dominant, but they were like one of those teams in fourth or fifth that you're like, okay, if we beat Vitality, then we're probably a playoff team and we're going to do some damage. Mm -hmm. But they've just looked so rough. And then in the middle, there's six teams tied at two and two, which is nuts because there's going to be a, a huge uh, like disparity as we keep going forward. Yeah. But right now, it's just like, okay, is Misfits actually a decent team? Is Origin really like in the middle of the pack? Realistically, probably not. But based on schedule and stuff like that, yeah. there's just a lot going on. So, I mean, it's still really early to tell. So let's talk about G2 first. Yes. Um, because G2 continues to surprise with crazy compositions, which shouldn't <laughs> be a surprise anymore, but yet somehow we're still surprised. Against Vitality, we see Perks in the bot lane, right? So tell me tell me about how the weekend played out for them. So, so you know, they always pick Pike. We're used to Pike. <laughs> but this time, it was not Caps, not Wonder. It was Perks in the bot lane, playing the Pike with Yumi next to him. And Yumi hasn't won a game yet in the LEC, but together with the Pike, it's actually a pretty crazy combo because, you know, when, when Pike goes invisible and swims underwater, uh -huh. so does Yumi. So you can kind of sneak up on people and make this this skirmishy, pick-oriented comp uh, work, and they were just all over the map. Like, anytime we see G2 with Pike, they're always roaming around, but now you add an extra element of bringing Yumi in with it, and it's just pretty crazy and again the creativity with this stuff yeah. is wild and they keep making it changes when now when G2 picks Pike you're like okay is that mid is it top <laughs> is it bot it's just so hard yeah. to, to draft against right so another wrinkle totally totally um so Fnatic is the other team that's undefeated yeah. and they actually play against G2 in week three so how do you see this matchup playing out I mean Fnatic looked, again they they look really strong it's it's the, the age-old story in the LEC and in EU, right? It's yeah. Fnatic versus G2, who's going to be the kings of Europe this time. It's always one of the two. I did like some of Fnatic's creativity as well in in uh, in this week. Again, they just for matchup sake, they actually moved Whippo and Shen into the mid lane. And you know, Shen is not a mid laner, but just to get. <laughs> a better matchup and avoid the cannon from the other team. Yeah. They made that adjustment. So I kind of like what they're doing as well. They they're also ran uh, you know, some other unique champions. So they're, it looks like they're trying to kind of adapt to what G2 is doing, mm -hmm. uh, which is more creativity, try to surprise people and just expand their champion pool. Um, might not happen with Reckless. I don't think he's going to play Pike anytime soon. Uh, you know, Reckless is more of a standard AD carry, yeah. but um, I, I think... Uh, <laughs> hello. Oh, yeah, we've seen that respect. so recently, Lisa. So we, we've seen cannon. that really recently. <laughs> okay, um, but, yeah, I think that might help them, but at the end of the day, G2 just looks so on top of everyone else right now, and they yeah. keep expanding what they can do, so I think it's still There's G2. There's no limits for them. There's not. Um, let's talk about Misfits now, because last week we talked about their 10-man roster, yes. and we also saw Kire, right, play for the first time this week. So what did you, how did you think they did? Yeah, I mean, there's been talk about their 10-man roster, and, and now after, you know, we finally get to see it in action, with Kira being kind of the star guy they brought over. When everyone saw that Kira came over from Fenerbahce, they're like, oh, okay, yeah. what's happening with Maxlore? And he just came in and was so aggressive this week. With Kindred, he was, like, flashing forward. Um, which, and it, Kindred's not a tank champion, right? So yeah. it's a little scary, but he was just getting up in people's faces. Once they got an early lead, he just kept pushing it, kept getting those stacks, and eventually he had seven kills uh, with no deaths. So very impressed Is by him. Is he what the team needs, you think? I think so. I, it just gives some life. Okay. It looks like he, he's on top of his game. Uh, they went one and one this week with a tough loss against, like, a better team. But uh, I was still very impressed by, by Kira, and I think he's going to... Maybe eventually just win that starting job away from Max Lord. Ooh, we'll see. Oh, sad for Max Lord. But you know, know, the team is climbing up, yep. which is always good. Uh, let's talk, over, uh, talk about XL now because we, we saw to, Mickey yeah. play. Uh, how did you think they did? Uh, well, again, they're only four, so not well. <laughs> yeah. um, but they went. They were only like they managed six kills and one tower in week two. That's in two games. So that's that's terrible, right? That's really bad. They were like scuffed dives. They were just not taking priority in the early game and kind of sitting back. And when they did take aggression, it didn't go well. And obviously, I mean, Mickey's first week. Yeah. They brought in Karnan, Um so it's gonna take time to get this roster back together. Mm -hmm. But the moves that they made aren't like, oh my God, this is gonna totally revamp this roster and make them compete against G2, right? Yeah. Like Mickey didn't exactly perform super well with the Golden. Guardians. Sharon missed the spring split because no one wanted to pick him up. Mm -hmm. um, so it's, it's, we'll see if this roster can come together with more time, but obviously yeah. they start 0 and 4. They don't have high expectations already. They should look towards next year. Sure. <laughs> Most likely. 2020. 2020 great year, could right. be their year. Okay, yeah. Matt, now it's time to pick your player of the week. And if you give it to Crown again, I'm going to get mad at you. <laughs> Who are you giving it to this week? I won't give it to a player on a team that went 0 and 2. I swear okay, to God. Okay, good. Okay, I'm going to give it to Hillisang from Fnatic. He was, you know, he's kind of hit or miss sometimes when he's off. 
he's kind of inting, but when he's on, <laughs> he's uh, just making plays on supports. And this time he had Rakan and Pike, two incredibly big playmaking supports. And I think he was another reason why, along with Brock, said that this team kind of continues to push the boundaries. And when, whenever there's an aggressive push, it's always Hillisang leading the charge, making the big play happen. And, you know, sometimes Reckless gets credit for the kills and Caps get credit because he makes these flashy mechanical plays. But under all of that, it's Hillisang with, you know, just the smooth, cool, calm, uh, yeah. aggressive plays that set everything up. Yeah. Give the support some love, guys. I know. They okay. deserve some Player of the Weeks every now and then. Right? All right. So congrats to Hillisang for being our Player of the Week. That's it for today's Esports in 30. Thanks to Azale as well for joining us today to chat LCS. Make sure to tune in tomorrow because AJ and Ron will be going over another week of the Overwatch League. Until then, head over to all our socials at Squad State. We'll see you tomorrow.